All right, well, I'm going to throw the brushes right at this one right away here. This is a Gary Oak tree in my chosen, and let's paint it. Now, I mixed up a bunch of the colors ahead of time, and I got a lot of brushes, so uh, I decided I would load up the brushes and see how quickly we can get this done, like uh, almost like we're late for someone's birthday party and uh, we need a present. So we're going to make, make a present here. Let's go. All right, so we need some blue in here. I'm going to turn this a little bit here. I wet the sky, didn't bother drying it because we're late for this birthday party. Yeah, a little darker into here. We'll see what that does. Hopefully we won't ruin this whole thing, but it'll probably look really amazing by the time we're done. And this Gary Oak tree is quite dark in the background, so I'm going to let this do its thing here. And if you want, let's put some different colors into here. I got this cat orange mixed up. I'll throw some of that into there, just lightly touching the brush into the painting here. And we'll take that across in there. And into this grasses, what the heck. We'll get in there like that. And uh, we got some nice bright uh, clouds going into here. I'm going to throw some of this Add orange into here, just get some definition to our clouds here. Got some nice blues going on here. I'm gonna throw some more blues in here, some more, make it nice and vibrant. No sense in being boring. There we go. That's going in nice there. You know, so I'm gonna straighten that out here. Hopefully, I got this at the right spot here. Let me just check for one second in the camera. Yeah, you guys can see this so. Let's go. We got some paper towel here. So we've got, already had some cloud there just because I didn't put any pigment there. So I don't have to mess with that too much. But there's some kind of in the photo. There's some cloud just moving into this blue area into here. Look at that. That's pretty dark and dramatic in there. So I like that. So let's go into here. I'm going to leave that in there. So that's about it there. Wipe that up, let that come down, just like that. All right, so what do we got next here? I got some uh, nice greens mixed up here. So let's make our horizon line. I'm just going to come right across here. I'm not going to worry about this old Gary Oak too much. And just bring that right down, just like that. Okay, so we're done there. So we got some um, quinacridone gold mixed up here on this brush. So. I'm going to throw that into there, a little bit into here, let's throw some splatters into there. And we got this tree over here, so I'm just going to pick up just a hint of this. This is going to crawl everywhere, so I'm just going to put some in the middle here, and I'll just see how far it goes. This is Beihong, 140 pound, uh, rough, uh, no, uh, it's not rough, it's uh, medium grain paper which they call their fine grain which is actually kind of medium so it's kind of early uh, spring here where the leaves are just starting to emerge so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a glow here this greenery a little green gold into here just a hint of this green stuff starting here and, and this tree here is uh, just starting to bloom too so I'm going to throw in some some of these leaves that are just emerging out of this tree here and it's a little bit early here but it's actually looking pretty good so we're just going to continue doing what, our, what we're doing here with these greens looking good I'm not going to worry about the trunk tree trunk yeah, I'm just going to give it the hints of these green leaves just emerging out of here. I got some undersea green just to get these going here. This is pretty wet, so everything, watercolor looks great when you're mixing on paper all the time. So this is what it's going to do here. And we're going to give it some individual leaves. 
There, I'm just going to pick that up out of the sky a little bit there. You can always throw in some seagulls, it isn't my chosen, so it's uh, this uh, pasture field is uh, bordering the ocean and there's lots of seagulls around, so like that there. All right, now we got some, uh, let's go a little darker here, see what we got on our brush. I got this one loaded up with some, uh, I think it's raw umber and some uh, raw umber and uh, quinacridone burnt orange together. So I'm going to get rid of those little sparkles into here just like that. And you're going to want to uh, maybe throw in a little bit more dark into here, some bit more dark sparkles or dark uh, leaves coming out here. There we go, just like that. Yeah, that's looking good there. This is really wet still here down in this area, so I'm not going to do anything to that. I am going to put in just a nice stroke right across there, just like that. And maybe another one just to tie it in right here, just like that. And it's a little bit thick, so I'm going to go ahead and blend that a little bit. Just like that. And I'm not, I don't use white much, but white creates a lot of uh, texture and things. And you see how this is painting itself, it's kind of coming down already into, to make these grasses. But I'm going to splatter a little of this white in here and you'll see what it does when it dries. Just like that there. I'm going to pick up a little of these excess sprays out of here. And maybe give it a little bit more cloud detail right there. Just like that. Alright, so we got our dramatic uh, sky, we got the fields, just bloom and it's, it's just painting itself down here. I've got my palette knife and it's early, but I'm going to put in just a few of these little details into here just for interest and get the darks to overlap this green a little bit. It's a little bit too early, so I'm waiting here. I'm gonna splash water, just clean water on this, but it's still really wet. I'm looking at uh, sideways here, and I can see that I've still got a lot of sheen going on there. And uh, so I can start on the tree trunk, but it's too wet. So I'm gonna let this dry just for a minute here, and we'll get going on it uh, some more. Okay, so this is dry enough here where I can get in with my just clean water. It's actually dirty water, but I'm gonna, just going to splash some into here. And we're going to watch that do its thing. And you see how it separates the pigment on paper there and just runs down. That's great. I'm going to get some, some purple something. I forget the name of that color. Cabasol Violet is one of them, but then I got another one in that same pan, or in the same uh, um, well, so that's kind of both of them mixed together. There, it's looking good just like that. Then we can get going on our tree trunk here. Let's see what we got here. Mixed up in the palette. I'm not sure if this is going to be... Dry enough? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, I took a quick break there, letting this dry. I used a hair dryer on this, and I, I hardly ever use a hair dryer. So there's our stutter strokes again. Stutter stroke in uh, that I've used in the other tutorial when you're doing tree limbs. It always looks good when they stop, start and stop. Because they always grow in every direction. I should have dried this more, but I guess if you're late to the party, you just got to paint. And fix it as you go. Mm. 
You don't have to connect all these shapes just because they have, they'll just give you the impression that these little branches are growing every direction into here. And I'm going to put some uh, green over them again. And I'm getting a little light on the pigment here. This is almost pure pigment. If you've watched my demo uh, on uh, total water that you're putting onto your painting, you would probably have practiced some of this and uh, know a little bit more about how much pigment you have on your brush and uh, what effect it's going to have on the paper. Looking pretty good there. I'm going to do a really quick little stutter stroke here, starting and stopping as I go. And I'm putting these branches in in every direction and I'm going to let uh, my paper towel pick up where I don't want the branches. It just creates some space between them because you never see the whole branch if there's greenery starting to come out here. So this is blooming quite nicely here, or blooming, it's developing I guess, and mixing on the paper quite nicely. I'm going to clean that up a little bit there just to make it look a little bit more normal. And like that, I'm going to come in here and just make that branch come out here a little bit. And the branches below need to be bigger than the branches above because it doesn't make any sense to have a great uh, big branch above when it's not being supported by much of anything. But they, the trees do grow that way a little bit down uh, if you really look at them. But I just want to make this a little more believable. You can uh, look for that. And that's a big branch here, so I'm going to increase the size of this one. Coming up into here like that. And maybe even more kind of down here. Like that there. I've got some orange here, so I'm just going to put some interesting colors here. Here and there. And you don't want to do that too much just because it's going to look strange. And that's going to mix in with our browns and it's going to pretty much disappear anyway. So down here you've got there's some greenery in here. I've got a lovely drip right there because I had my brush is sopping wet which is what I want in here. I'm going to go into here like that. And it's almost negative painted itself. And I'm going to give this somewhere to go. I see this dripping straight down. So you're going to react to watercolor as it as it does what it wants. And there, just like that. And I've got a little bit too much pigment here, so I've dried my brush on the paper towel. I'm just going to pick these little pools of green up. And I'm going to get some thicker, get some thicker uh, undersea green on my brush here. And drop it in below here, just to make sure we get a shadow. This is so thick, I'm having trouble releasing it on the onto the paper here and just like that there so then now that I got that going on I'm going to get some more undersea green and I'm going to extremely carefully put these leaves in here go right off the page here like that And that's exactly what it looks like there. So I've got in this actual tree, there's some branches that are headed down towards the ground here, and they go every direction. Kind of like that. So I'm going to help it do that a little bit more here. And the reason there's greenery is here is because the farmer can't get underneath the tree to cut the hay underneath there, so and add a little bit more to that and this needs some more coming down here like that 
I'll put another bigger branch into here, just a suggestion of it, and I'll increase the size of that one there. A little something, there's a branch that's going like straight down over here. Some things you paint become unbelievable, so you don't want to over, I'm overdoing that, I can tell. Um, and then come down here. When it starts not looking like a tree, that's when you know you're overdoing it or doing something wrong. Kind of like that. And my plan here was to use a spray bottle, which I have right here. And, but this is still pretty wet. Let's just spray that a little bit and just increase our texture here. And that's what it's going to do. And if I can just get some of these. Oh, too much over there. Let's pick that up a little bit there like that and that what I'm gonna do is just grab some water and just put some water in where I want my pigment to go and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna grab some of this um, green gold and I'm just gonna fill those little spots where I got and put that water and it's gonna more or less follow where the water was water is and move in there and put some more up here and I got some Hansa yellow light and I'm gonna see if I can brighten in some of the brighten up some of these spots into here and that'll give you a nice contrast on your the background there like that now I want this foreground darker than it is so I'm just gonna drop in some purple shadows into here just like that and I do want to I want to run this down this way here but I want it lighter so I've just got clean water and just fade out this way so your eye comes back over here and I'm, I've let this dark here and the darker down here so let's frame this nicely and you've got some nice bright light here I've got some green gold You can see this paper is really wet, so that means I've got to go with with almost straight pigment into the painting here if I want it to show up as anything. Like that there. Okay, so these spots up here, I can tell they're a little, just a little bit tight, so just gonna throw some clean water out. Well, it's actually dirty water, but it's green. It's what I've been mixing my greens in. And what it's gonna do is t it's gonna take these little spots of spray and it's gonna blend them together like that there. And then this is gonna that's gonna actually create a nice little glow there. If you want, you can grab uh, just dry your brush off on a paper towel. And if you want more highlights, you can create them with your brush. That's under the tree where there's some shadows. So I'm going to leave that there. And I want a bit of I want a bit of a highlight right here. So I'm going to pull that off of that with my dry brush. And I do want I want another one right here, like where you're seeing through the leaves in the trees to behind the tree. So I'm picking up pigment there now. And you can do that. You can do it with a paper towel too. And paper towel is just a little quicker and easier really than using the brush. And you can see this little river of pigment coming down here. And that's what I wanted. Um, it really gives you some interesting effect. And I'm going to clean up this tree just with some raw umber. I believe it is. Go under here. This is almost pure pigment because I know my, my tree is really wet here. And it's going to give you some interesting effect. And the last thing I'm going to do here, I think, or one of the last things, is I'm going to grab my salt 
Yeah, this is almost too wet for salt, but if I got the I got a clump of salt here. I've had this little bunch of salt in my on my side table here for a while, so I'm gonna do that there. And I'm gonna put it over here and it creates a nice texture. Especially in the darks, you know, if, but you don't want to put it everywhere. That's going to create some nice tree texture right there. You can tell, looking good. And I can throw some into the higher parts of the tree here, just for the heck of it. It's getting a little too dry for that up there. And then I can see that the uh, lower part here is getting just about the right dryness for pulling some detail. No, you see how it's closing up here? That means it's not quite dry enough, so if I wait or just try a different, start in a different area here. You can just give it the impression of these grasses coming up. And again, you don't want to push too hard or else you're going to, you're going to be uh, damaging the paper and it's going to look strange. But. It's looking good right there, but see it's pretty much closing in. It's still a little bit too wet, so I'm just going to wait a second here and look at my salt content. And I think I'm going to, the salt, you got to leave it on there until it's perfectly dry. So I never use a hair dryer, so let me dry up with a hair dryer. And to prove myself wrong that I never use a hair dryer, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've dried it enough with the hair dryer down here, and this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to put, pull some more of these highlights into here, like that, and that's how about how dry it needs to be. It still needs to have some moisture to, on it, and uh, some of these stays. So that was good right there. And uh, we'll let these kind of blend. in like that. I think that's looking pretty good right there. So I'm gonna just leave it like that. And with salt you really should let it dry naturally and then let this uh, you know let the pigment uh, dissipate the, pig the pigment and uh, just do its kind of salt effect. But I'm gonna go ahead and dry it and I'll be right back and uh, I'll uh, scrape the salt off and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so I've scraped the salt off of this uh, painting. You can see the, the highlights remained in here. I dried it with a hair dryer. And like I said, it's always better to leave it overnight and dry naturally so that the salt can have its normal effect. But um, we're in a hurry, so we uh, that's what we did. So I've got a little gouache here, and, and it's white. It's uh, made by uh, M. Graham and Company. I mean, I've used this stuff for a long time just to bring out if you want some little highlights here and there and it actually this gouache it, it dissolves kind of like watercolor too so it works great for doing uh, you know if you're painting a little cabin or something you've got some smoke coming out of the cabin and you wet the paper beforehand it uh, it really works well for that too Which I was, I was uh, coming home, um, and uh, there's a house on an island, on a lake just north of here, and uh, it was burning. They were burning some leaves or whatever their their uh, cuttings, and I took a, I stopped and took a bunch of pictures of it, and because uh, it was so neat, and I want to show, because I want to do a tutorial on. Uh, on uh, that smoke and creating that smoke out of chimneys kind of thing so even though it wasn't coming out of their chimney it gave me the great good idea to uh, for a future a uh, painting anyway so there we go I so I just put in a few little highlights you can actually put some highlights you get the Sun it's kind of morning here and you can put some over here you know on these branches a little bit here too just to create a little bit of interest but don't overdo uh, gouache and little highlights like that because it'll look unnatural it'll look kind of forced if you kind of overdo it 
it's kind of disappearing there. So there, um, thanks for subscribing and uh, hit the like button. And uh, that's about it for this painting. I think I'll just sign it and uh, take it to my uh, fictitious uh, birthday party and I'll have something to give. <laughs> so, anyways, just joking about that, but it's a, it's a nice quick painting to do. And it's a lot of fun uh, using all these techniques on uh, one painting. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.